Hello everyone, welcome to another Exchange 2019 video. My name is Ed and in this video I'm going to show you how to set the TLS certificate name on one of your receive connectors. Now you may be wondering why do you need to do this? Well, you may have clients that require that if you have a custom receive connector, for example, that is sending mail to them, that it has to enforce TLS and have the certificate name on it so that they can do a proper handshake with you and not just use the default connector, which doesn't have anything set on it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at our exchange certificates. So what I do is I open up the exchange management shell. We need to do that elevated. So it has administrator in the top corner here. And let's just wait for it to load quickly. There we go. I'm just going to clear the screen. And we could type in get hyphen exchange certificate. We will see all our certificates. Now you should have an SSL certificate in your list here that is doing everything for you. So your SMTP connectivity to Exchange Server using HTTPS, etc. Because this is a lab, I don't have one, but for demonstration purposes, I will be using one of my two certificates here. I created a second one just to play with in one of my other PowerShell scripts. Uh, I use PowerShell to create a certificate. So now that we have our set of certificates with our thumbprints, because we're going to need the thumbprint to be able to do this, is let's first go look at our receive connector. So I did have it open earlier. The command is get hyphen receive connector and then in inverted commas the name. Now you may be wondering how do I get the name? So it's actually pretty simple. If you type in just get hyphen receive connector, it will list every receive connector for every single server in your organization. So if you have 400 servers, it'll list 400 servers. If you only have one, it'll only list the one. In my case, I've got two. So I've got my patched system in my lab and my unpatched system in my lab, the one that I've been doing all the exploits on to demonstrate how bad a server is that's not patched. And in this case, we were going to work with the client uh, front end. So if I go back to my command, you now type in the receive connector that you want to work with, the full name. So this is the identity. So get hyphen receive connector in inverted commas, because if you don't put inverted commas, it doesn't like the slash here, and it's going to error out. And then you can pipe it to FL or you can do FL TLS star. And what we're interested in is we're interested in TLS certificate name. Now you can see that it is not set to anything. There's nothing being defined, nothing configured. It's not using anything at all. This receive connector I'm busy customizing, but in your environment, you'll obviously customize the one that is relevant to you. So the next step is we need to run three sets of commands. And let me just copy the commands from my blog here so that we have it all. Now what this does is we are first defining a variable, then we're getting the certificate with a thumbprint. So in this example, I'm going to take the thumbprint, which is this one, and I'm going to put it in here. Uh, let's see if I can copy and paste this again. We're going to get exchange with this thumbprint. Then we got another variable to say that we are going to specify cert and the issuer with the subject. And then we're going to set the receive connector. In our case, it will be ex2019b and because this is notepad we need to just make sure that the inverted commas are correct or else it's going to error out you can see notepad puts in the curly inverted commas and that is not going to work then what we're going to do is we're going to set this receive connector that we've identified here so 
the server name has to be correct. The client front end, the server again, as you can see there, the TLS certificate name will be what we specify on this variable. So let's copy this line for line. And let me clear my screen first. And let's paste the first one in. Okay. Let's paste the second command in. Press enter. And then let's paste the third one in where we're going to set the receive connector. Uh, ex let's just make sure that I have the certificate name correct. Uh, sorry, the server name ex2019b client front end. Okay, so it doesn't like that name. So let's paste it in again. I pasted the wrong one. Let's do this again, copy it. And then let's paste. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the certificate. Exchange certificate because it's already got this on it. And I'm going to just use the Azure one for now. But that's why you see, that's why you need a valid certificate to do this. And then I'm going to copy this again and paste it. Okay, so it doesn't like the certificate here. So once you have a valid certificate uh, thumbprint, in this case, it doesn't want to work in my lab with the one that I specified because it's not an SSL certificate then you just replace the thumbprint with the actual one and then the final command <clears throat> should work without a problem it's just that it doesn't like the issuer of this uh, these two certificates that i actually chose to demonstrate um, i thought i could use them but it, for some reason doesn't like it then once it is valid you'll obviously then have it set and when you run the command again to go and check your certificate status, uh, like here, it'll be set. So what I just want to show you on my blog here, what I was talking about is, let's just put that there. <clears throat> I've got a, I had an SSL certificate here. You can see it's got a fully qualified domain name there and the TLS cert name was blank, and then when we set it to that um, thumbprint, which is the one for mail.theexchangelab.com, in this example, is it set it correctly, and then when you checked it again, you can see that it GeoTrust issued this one, but yours might be a, a different provider, or it might be the same one. And I just thought showing you actually on the blog itself or using a, a certificate that I just had available here, it would work. But in this case, it didn't want to work. But that is how you can set it. I will put these commands in the description of the video for you to use. Uh, and I will put a link to my blog as well. If you liked the video, please hit that subscribe button. And thank you very much for watching.